Everybody knows that the dice are loaded. Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed. Everybody knows that the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. Everybody knows the fight was fixed. The poor stay poor. The rich get rich. That's how it goes. Everybody knows. Leonard Cohen. Now, full disclosure, my first experience hearing these lyrics came from the Don Henley version, and he delivers it in a very different way that I think gets the message across a little better than the original singer and songwriter did. But nevertheless, the point stands. Folks, it is time to stick a fork in it. Everybody knows it's over. And personally, after having watched Donald Trump speak today from Mar-a-Lago, and having that been my job to watch people speak and listen to them speak and understand what the subtext is, I think he knows. I think he knows it is so far fixed that it's beyond anybody's ability to do anything about it. And believe it or not, I have proof for it right here in front of you today. I'm going to show you something on a completely unrelated topic that's going to blow your mind that proves it. See, a long time ago, it shouldn't be all that long ago, really, but it seems so now with politics. When Biden came out and all of a sudden decided to change his mind about endorsing his own vice president, I thought it was very strange the way that all went down. And believe it or not, even some Democrats and some liberals are beginning to perk up and say, wait a minute, this doesn't pass the sniff test. Even Democrats are saying this now. Wait a minute, she has been invisible. She hasn't done virtually any kind of public relations or and all of a sudden she's swinging polls six and eight points the other way. Even Van Jones has brought this up and he was a big Kamala supporter. Even he's brought this up. It's battlefield of the mind. There's something that was said today, a few things actually, at Mar-a-Lago that if you stopped for a minute and you really listened to it, you would understand something. And you would see something coming from Mr. Trump that would lead you to believe that what's going to happen in November is going to be something that shocks everyone. Because they don't care. They This whole thing about Waltz getting picked... They don't care. They know. It's fixed. It's already fixed. It's already decided. Now, real quick, Battlefield of the Mind videos. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for showing up over there. A dollar a month. That's it. One single dollar a month. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. We're going to have a brand new video up next 48 hours. Once again, it's not for everybody. I'll be very honest with you. It's gloves off. It's old school. We don't pull any punches, and we don't fall into the whole trap of politically correct. We try not to be gratuitous with it, but sometimes you just have to show things as they are. Now, Florida Maquis, wait a minute, I think you got your pictures mixed up. That's that's clearly something from Antarctica. I, I mean, we really want to see the Antarctica content again, but why are you showing it now? You let off with politics. Well, it's an interesting thing, this... A uh, little blurb came out across the science wires about these very strange, you ready for this? Never before seen images in Antarctica. Wait a minute. We've seen images like that from you for years. And years. Yeah, but you see, they get to write what the truth is. These are, I kid you not, according to mainstream science, never before seen images. Think I'm kidding? Ben Turner published 31 July 2024. Never before seen shapes up to 1,300 feet long discovered beneath Antarctic ice. The unusual patterns found beneath West Antarctica's Dotson ice shelf could help scientists to better understand how glaciers erode. How glaciers erode. Never before seen. YouTube channel talking about Antarctica since 2018. 400 videos, hundreds of finds. Many look just like this. We've talked about it. We've gone over it in detail. 
But now, according to the official Google version, they are never before seen. Oh, but it gets better. Oh, but it gets better. You're going to love this. See, this is what's how this is tied to Trump. You see, this is a normal Google search page. And I typed in strange shapes in Antarctica and clicked on images. There's all images, videos, news. I'm sure everybody is very familiar with how a Google search page works. There's also a thing called tools you can click if you have a computer. And you can select when you want the images to appear, when you know the results to appear. I clicked past month. You can choose any time, past day, past week, past month. I chose past month. So, of course, right here at the top are these all these quote-unquote brand new, never-before-seen images. You won't see any of my images, of course, from my videos anywhere, even though there's 400 of them on my channel. And I'm scrolling down here, and I'm looking to my, looking, pardon me, and I look at this image here from Vice. Now, Vice is a very big outfit. They do a lot of traffic, and it's the old British topographical survey map that we've been using for half a decade. But here it says the results are from a day ago. A day ago, I thought to myself, wow, under Antarctic ice a day ago? Well, gosh, we need to see what Vice has to say about that. So I clicked on it, and guess what comes up? Well, of course, we see that that image, but it's an article by Becky Ferreira, October 25, 2023, 9.13 a.m. Wait, Florida Maquis, that was supposed to be a result from only a day ago. That's right. See what they do? See what they do? They will show you anything they want you to see. And one thing I learned doing the Antarctica videos is that when they decide they don't want you to see them anymore, you won't. I could do Antarctica videos, three of them a day, from now until next year this time, and because they don't like my channel, you won't see them. They won't show them to you. You would have to literally know what the exact titles were to search them, and you not having seen them or even knowing that they're out there, they'll pick the ones they want to show you. And that's exactly what they're going to do with Kamala Harris. They're going to pick and choose what the voters they want to manipulate see. And there'll be nothing you can do about it. Nothing I can do about it. Even as a channel operator. Now, watching Trump speak today, it was fascinating. Because he was asked some questions and the answers were ones that I don't think a lot of Trump supporters would uh, believe if they didn't, didn't hear it. But they're going to make sure everybody sees it and hears it. He was asked, first question, Mr. Trump, back in 2020, you said there was a, a lot of uh, speculation around Hillary Clinton, your opponent. 2016, pardon me. Back in 2016. And you said... You know, that we should uh, pursue criminal charges, lock her up, lock her up was a chant at virtually every rally. And when you got into office, you did nothing. Why was that? Do you know what Donald Trump said? I kid you not, this is what Donald Trump said. Now, this is today. Earlier today, you know what he said? He said it would have been disgraceful to lock up the wife of a former president of the United States. It would have been a disgraceful thing to do to send to prison a former first lady. It wasn't the right thing to do. It would have caused a great deal of grief and heartache amongst a certain group in this country, and I wanted to unify us. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are like, wait, what? Well, the whole time he talked about how Hillary, the reason that he had to be president was, well, because Hillary was a criminal. Criminal. How many of you remember the, the never Hillary's? People love to talk about Trump derangement syndrome and never Trump and all this. How many of you remember the never Hillary's? We don't care what Trump has done. We don't care what his history was. We know he's not perfect. We know he's got the, but we can't have. We absolutely can't have Hillary Clinton as president. I don't care who it was. I'm going to vote for that whoever because it's not Hillary. 
because she'll sell us out to China. Remember that? Well, guess what? There's a blurb that we found out of the Trump camp about China. And I think it's going to shock you. We got it at the end. See, I show images like this, and people say, Florida Maquis, why do you bring up ancient history? Why do you bring up ancient history? 2006 is ancient history? Today, today he talked about how it would make him look bad, how people would see him in a negative light, how disgraceful it would have been to lock up or pursue criminal charges against the wife of a former president. If that doesn't make him part of the club, I don't know what does. It gets better. It gets even better. When he came out and was speaking, he said, you know, I don't know how things are going to turn out. I don't know what's going on with Kamala, but I believe that the MAGA base, and this, these were his words, the MAGA base is really about 75% of the country. And I had, to, I had to rewind that to make sure I heard what he said right. He believes the MAGA base, the Make America Great Again base, represents 75% of the voting population in this country. 75%. You know what the... Re- 80% of the country, 80% of the country lives in urban areas like Minneapolis. San Francisco, Los Angeles, Detroit, Chicago, New York, Miami, Atlanta, St. Louis, Dallas, Washington, D.C. 80% of America lives in urban areas. Only 20% of America lives in rural areas. Now, some of these in urban, some of suburb, but to say that 75% of the country is the MAGA base is insane. It's absolutely insane. And we're going to get to this in just a minute. Where were we? Oh, the final thing. Oh, real quick. According to the World Bank, urban population of the United States, 2022 urban population, 276 million out of 380. See, the reason, the reason so many conservatives say we are a republic, not a democracy, is that in a republic, the individual is protected from the mob. But we still vote based on total numbers. Now, this was the part that's going to be really hard to stomach. The Trump supporter says his kids are struggling to pay rent and asks Trump what he'd do to bring down the cost of rent. The res- his res- Trump's response was just beyond, I couldn't believe it. Let's see if we can listen real quick here. What are you going to do about bringing down the rent and things like that in the economy? Because out of eight children that I'm a father and a stepfather to, five of them are struggling and I'm giving them part of my income on a regular basis. How are you going to make the economy, not just just the, you know, the food and, and electricity, but bring down the, you know, the rent prices, the housing prices, so that these kids can survive and yep. without their parents' help? Such a good question. Now, Trump at that point goes on and on about the price of bacon and then talks about drill, baby, drill, and then talks about China and offers absolutely no solutions. But what's the psyop here? What's this? What's the psyop? Did anybody catch it? This guy, who is allegedly a conservative, a Trump supporter, believes that it is government's job to control the prices of things. He's saying, basically, well, Biden did a bad job, and that's why things are so expensive. So what is Trump going to do to do a good job to control the prices of food, of rent, of all these things? Whoever believes that the government controls the economy lives in a socialist country. Isn't this exactly the reason you can't have guys like Nicholas? They control the means of production. You're telling me, you're telling me, 
you don't believe the U.S. government is in control, 100% rock-solid, iron-fisted control of this economy, things go up, things go down, you don't think they could do something about it? They could send billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine. They can finance 19 aircraft carriers. God knows how many overseas bases. Half the sixth fleet is now parked over in the Middle East, either in the Mediterranean or the Gulf of Oman. Do you know how much that costs every single day just to operate all those ships? But this guy wants Donald Trump to do something to make life easier for his kids because he perceives he perceives that the amount of money his kids are making should be enough to support them. And it's not. So it's government's fault. Did it ever occur to him that maybe his kids just aren't earning enough money and they need to go out and get another job? Or they need to get new accommodations? Or they need to double or triple up with somebody? You see, for him, it's he's given money to five of eight kids. Maybe they, all five of those kids need to go move in together. And split expenses. Why is it government's job? Why is it government's job? If you believe that, then you're a socialist. What exactly, what what dictatorial thing would you want to be done or undone by Donald Trump? And if this is the case, every four years... We're going to say, we want this individual to do this for me, to do that for me, to do this other thing for me, or to undo what this other person did. How is this not exactly what's going on in Venezuela, according to Venezuela detractors? What do you think he told his kids? Here's where things are going to get really bad. It's going to mess with a lot of people's minds. When his kids were coming up and making their own way in the world, Ivanka's quite a businesswoman. What do you think he would have told her about her if her sales were slumping? If she wasn't making enough money? You think he would have said, well, well, you know, Ivanka, maybe you should uh, petition Ronald Reagan, or maybe you should petition George Bush Sr., or you, we should uh, make sure that the government does this so that your business makes more money? No. No. That's not what he told her to do, and we can see exactly what she did do to build her brand. What does he think his wife did if she wasn't making enough money? Turn to government? No. Now, here's the part you're going to need to sit down for. Now, does this make sense? I'll bet she resented the hell out of him for that. I'll bet she resented the hell out of her father. She's daughter of a billionaire. And she had to go put herself out there like that. Now does Jared Kushner make sense? Where she can keep her clothes on, raise family, and not have to do all that? You ready for this, though? Five rules Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner's kids live by. Healthy food choices at home, weekly meetings at Trump Grill, and Mandarin piano and ballet classes. You see, all of her kids have to learn Chinese. All of her kids have to learn Chinese. See, Donald Trump almost got it right. He almost got it right. There was a moment when people were speculating about Sarah Palin. How he talks about drill, baby, drill, drill, baby, drill all that time. Who remembers that drill, baby, drill? Who do you think created that term? It was Sarah Palin that created that term back in 2007. Sarah Palin created that term. Drill, baby, drill. Because in Alaska, every Alaskan citizen gets a check from the Alaskan government based on the amount of oil that gets sold that's drilled up there. Lord of my key, that sounds like socialism. That's right, it does. Has Donald Trump ever said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to drill right here in America. We're going to frack. We're going to frack in every state. We're going to frack everywhere. We're going to put oil wells off the coast of Florida. So that no matter where you go, no matter what beach you're walking down, you're going to see a giant oil well. And there'll be slicks all over every single beach because, of course, you know, that's what capitalism dictates that we do. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that oil and we're going to sell it on the open market. And then we're going to take that money and we're going to give it to people. We're going to give universal basic income to that man's kids, the one that had the kids that needed all the financial help. We're going to send them a check for 1200 bucks a month. Add on infinitum. Universal basic income based on the amount of oil that we would sell in this country to the rest of the world. You're never going to hear him say that. You're never going to hear him say that, even though that's what goes on in Alaska. Every year, I think, they get a, a big check. So it's over at this point. It's over. Google has full control of it. If you uh, wonder why the Florida Maquis stopped talking about Antarctica, this channel wouldn't have survived. I tried. I did. The end of last year, those of you who remember, I did everything I knew how to do. I was putting Antarctica videos up every single night for months and months, and it almost destroyed the channel. It almost destroyed the channel. The last video I had that had any real amount of views was when I talked about possibly J.D. Vance being replaced by Ivanka Trump. I'm sure a lot of you remember that video. Go look at the numbers. I'm not making it up. Google controls the world right now. Google controls the world. Not not China. Not Vladimir Putin. Not the United States. Not the Bilderbergers. Not the uh, Rothschilds. Not the Fed. Not the IMF. Right now, Google controls the world. It's over. So, at this point, I guess there's not really much left to to do other than just pray and hope. Everybody knows the dice are loaded. Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. Everybody knows the fight was fixed. The poor stay poor and the rich get rich. That's how it goes. Everybody knows. I'll leave it there. Battlefield of the Mind. God bless. Thank you guys once again so much. I know a dollar doesn't seem like it would make a big deal, but in numbers it does. In large numbers, a lot of people just given a little tiny bit, little bitty bit, one US dollar per month, that's it, makes a big deal. And I'm humbled and I'm very, very thankful to have all of you. Could sure use the help these days. Very much appreciate it. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.